All right. Well, I guess we're going to talk about you know dealing with stress in college. Um, part of you know what I always like to start off with is basically have you introduce yourself, tell me a little bit about yourself, why you're here. Um, obviously, there's only one student, so and that could be on the quiz. How many students actually attended this workshop? So I'll start with Emily. Tell me a little bit about yourself while you're taking the workshop. Um, well, I'm here because I'm a senior and okay. finals is stressful. Okay, okay. And I would say, you know, everyone handles stress differently and that's something that we'll talk about today. Uh, I don't think there's necessarily a right or wrong necessarily because everyone does it differently. Now we can try to improve on it, modify it maybe a little bit. And so... Before I actually go into you know, the definition of stress, because this is more textbook definition of stress. I mean, we, we obviously know it has an effect on your body, stress does, and it affects your body in different ways. We could talk about you know, you know, you know, breathing harder, you know, uh, heart rate increasing, sweating, I mean, you name it. Uh, but stress is not necessarily a bad thing also. I think that's important to remember. We always think about stress as being negative, but has there been times when you've been stressed out and it's actually helped you a little bit? So let's think about that for a second. I'll give you one example. This is something that I always hear from students. You know, they say about why they wait till the very last minute to do their, you know, assignment. You know, they always say that, you know, I'm under a lot of stress, but I, I, I focus more and I'm able to get it done because I work well under pressure. So, I mean, so you agree with that. Okay. What are some other things that you would say that stress could be useful for? So how has stress helped you, potentially? I make better decisions. Okay. When I'm under pressure. Okay, yeah. I mean, I think so. I mean, because it's, it makes you a little bit more sharper and you're paying attention just a little closer to that. So, so don't think of stress as necessarily being bad. I mean, it can be because it can assume, you know, you know, you know, assume your life and make it difficult for you, but at the same time, it can make you focus a little bit too. And so I think that's important you know, to try to remember. Now, some have this mentality, and this is what you know, it says here about that fight or flight you know, you know, that stress can cause. You know, either you're going to deal with the situation of that stress or you're just going to run away from it. What would you say that you are in that category? Are you a fight? You know, there's pressure coming on, stress, and you deal with it right then and there, and you try to conquer, or are you more the flight? Just try to get away from the stressful situation. Both. Okay. Give me an example. With school-related things, it's fight, but with personal stuff, it's flight. Okay, yeah. And so, like, if you're stressed out about, let's say, a test or, you know, some homework that you're trying to do and that you're kind of falling behind, maybe, let's say, you know, how do you fight that? What, what would you do? Would you go to the professor and talk to them, potentially? Or how would you handle that? Lock myself in a study room. Okay, lock yourself in a study room and just spend the time that's necessary to get it done. Yeah. You know, now, what about, you know, a, you know, a personal problem? You know, sometimes, you know, it's better just to kind of pretend that it's not there so you can, you know, just focus on other things, you know? Yeah. And, um, some other things that we'll look at, there are different types of stress, different levels, I would uh, argue. There's the acute stress, and that happens from time to time, you know, that stress that, you know, kind of, you know, pops up, but it doesn't last for a long, you know, period of time. Um, that It can be good and bad, potentially. Uh, an example that it mentions is that maybe there's an event that's coming up that is a, that could be fun, but also at the same time stressful. And so, what would be an example of that? Study abroad. Study abroad, yes, because you will be taking a study abroad trip coming up here soon. So there is, you know, some stress that is coming with that, but at the same time, it should be fun. You are going to have some good moments while you're there, but just the planning for it and the anticipation that it's coming, you know, getting on a, you know, an airplane, all these things can create some stress along the way. Now, another type of, you know, stress that would be more negative, that was, you know, it gives an example of like a car accident. You know, it's a short period of time where you're going to be stressed out dealing with that car accident and some of the issues that come with that, but, you know, it shouldn't last that long. 
you know, dealing with that. So that's what they are kind of giving an example of an acute stress. You know, the episodic one, that's a little bit more frequent. It happens quite, you know, a little bit more often. You know, uh, example that they talk about is specifically, you know, like a, what we call a type A personality. This is a person that is normally on top of everything, that kind of micromanages life, you know, really has a good planner, looks at all those details. And they tend to stress out a little bit more because they want things to work out exactly how they have planned. Would you argue that you are a type A personality? Yes. Yes. So and the reason why I mention this is, is because the idea is really to let you know that it's okay to stress. It's, I mean, it's not, it's, I mean it, you know, if you have a certain type of personality, there's a certain amount of stress that's going to come with that. That's naturally. Now, it's just making sure that it doesn't become more serious. So like the chronic acute stress, that is the more serious one. That's the type of one that you are going to encounter quite often. It's going to become overwhelming in your life. That's when you can actually really start having you know, more serious problems. Uh, that's where you start you know, encountering more health issues as a result of your stress. So that is a generally, you know, I look at acute stress, episodic, you know, acute stress, those are manageable in my opinion. The chronic one is a typically one that you'd like to avoid if possible. That's where it becomes a lot more problematic and actually can have that impact you know, on uh, your body. And so that is relentless you know, worrying, constantly. No break in sight, it's just uh, that overwhelming you know, feeling of stress. Now would you say at times you've encountered that? Where it has affected your body dealing with that type of stress yes. yes and so my big question is how did you deal with it because everyone's going to handle it differently I don't think there's a you know perfect solution but how did you specifically try to handle it it was a personal thing okay. so I put more focus on school stuff okay so in some ways you felt like you know in order to you know handle you know the situation is to try to gear you know your attention towards something else focus on that for a little while and then hopefully it, you know let that kind of work itself out to a degree okay nothing wrong with that uh, some symptoms and signs so let's see if you agree with some of this I don't know we'll find out physical symptoms irregular bowel movements personally I don't even want to envision that so <laughs> Uh, involuntary, you know, twitching or shaking. Would you agree with that? Could you see that? Okay. Uh, irregular or missed, you know, periods. Don't want to think about that. I'm, uh, getting sick more often than normal. I think I, definitely I can see that. You know, the stress on a person's body. They could be a, a little bit more sick. Reduced li libido. Don't even want to think about that either. Uh, chest pain. I can see that. Headaches, nausea, muscle aches, trouble sleeping. I think trouble sleeping could definitely be, you know, uh, a pretty big one out there, you know, dealing with stress. Um, you know, heartburn, you know, fatigue, flushed skin, clenched teeth, unusual changes in weight. I think all that you know, definitely agree with. So those are more physical symptoms of stress. Emotional symptoms, less than normal patients. Would you agree with that one? Yes. Give me an example of that. Something that would normally not bother you under most normal circumstances, but now it irritates you. What would be an example of that? The teacher misunderstanding what everyone is saying. Okay, okay, I can see that. Uh, I know for me, sometimes, you know, when I'm more, you know, kind of irritated and, uh, you know, I lose my patience with text messages. You know, it's like, why are they texting me right now? I don't need to know this right now. You know, so, Normally, that would not bother me in the slightest. You know, it's like, oh, the texting, whatever. But sometimes when you're a little bit more irritated, you know, those little things, you know, just kind of amplify. And, 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 you know, they kind of can drive you, you know, drive you nuts a little bit. Uh, feelings of sadness or depression. I think that's, you know, yeah, you know, that's pretty common there if you're uh, stressed out. Uh, you know, uh, re restlessness, definitely agree with that. Reduce or eliminate desire for activity. Once enjoyed on a regular, or, you know, kind of regular basis. So, what would that an example be in that category? Because I can see that happening quite a bit. If you like reading, and then it takes you out of the source of stress, you just don't want to read ever. 
Okay, so normally, you know, you know, you can read, it's not a big issue, maybe you really actually enjoy, you know, taking time to read, but you're just so stressed out and frustrated, and that even the thing that you enjoy doing typically, you don't want to deal with, you just don't want to mess with that. Um, so what would you do, you know, if, you know, you're not doing some of the things that you regularly do for fun? What, what's typically happening, you know, taking its place? What would you be doing most likely? If you were, you know, not feeling good, you're, you're stressed out, you know, you're you're not reading. What I mean, what what would you be doing most likely? Sleeping. <clears throat> okay, so yeah, so maybe it's almost like you're, you're shutting down. You're just like, I'm done messing with anything. I'm just gonna sleep. Okay, so maybe that's your body telling you, you know, that you know, that, you know, that you need a break. So uh, you know, sense of isolation. So maybe you're not around people a lot. You know, when you're stressed out and kind of uh, upset, you know, trouble coping with life issues, more frequent or extreme pessimistic attitude, so you're negative, you know, they, and I mean, I can tell you I've done that myself. Um, so college stress, you know, by the numbers, 20%, so 20% of college students say they feel stressed most of the time. Would you agree with that? Yes. That number is low, but yes. Okay. Now that's most of the time. So uh, almost the, the entire time, they're at least dealing with some stress. So I can see that. Now I do think there's going to be some other numbers that I think you might may agree with more. 34% of college students report feeling depressed, or at least at one point within the last 90 days. Would you agree with that? Yes. Yeah. And then 80% of college students say they sometimes or often feel stressed. That's probably a little bit more accurate, you know, I think there. Because, I mean, we all deal with different types of stressors. And it doesn't necessarily have to completely, you know, involve college itself. I mean, we have a life. We, we do other things besides college. It's that kind of a cumulative effect, you know, that has an impact on us. Now, over here, you know, there's some other numbers. 10% of college students had thoughts of suicide. I mean, I'm glad that number is low. It should hopefully, I mean, honestly, I wish it was lower. 13% of college students, you know, have been diagnosed with uh, depression, anxiety, or a mental health condition. Uh, and then about half of surveyed college students felt overwhelmed with anxiety at least once within the last 12 months. So all that, I'm assuming you would agree with. You know, so college life is stressful. You know, I mean, it really is. And so uh, what's kind of interesting is when I was going to college, my sister, who had never went to college, uh, kind of had a misconception of college. You know, I remember early on, you know, she was telling me about how college is super easy, you know, because you know, she worked full time. And she was talking about how all you have to do is go to class for one hour each class, super easy. And so I don't think she had a really uh, uh, understanding of what college life was like. Because just because you have a class, how much time do you have to spend outside of class doing all of your homework and so forth? It's recommended that you spend two hours in addition to every hour in class. Okay. Now, I, I, the word that I heard you say was recommended. So that indicates that maybe, just maybe, you're not following that recommended you know, deal all the time. You're under oath. So, uh, so yeah, most of the time we don't have to spend that much time. You know, but, I mean, realistically, there are some classes that are going to require a lot more time. You know, and at, when that happens, you know, it can get a little stressful. Some other things that may cause you know, uh, stress in college is uh, living away from home. Now, I mean, uh, for some students, you know, this is the, you know, the first time, you know, that they've ever lived away from home. They're living over in the dorms. You know, you've got a lot of different personalities over there. And so, and, you know, that sense of missing home. But also, you know, you have that, you know, that connection at home. You have someone that you can rely on, that, you, you know, your support system. And so that can be pretty stressful, not having that, you know, uh, because you're living, you know, far away potentially. Academic demands and test anxiety. Would you agree with that? Think about high school, for example. In high school, was it was it stressful academically for you? 
Not really. And, and for a lot of high school students, normally they're not stressed out as much. You know, that it tends to be a little bit more of a breeze. They can kind of get through that. And so really the first type of uh, challenge that they face academically is in college. They struggle. You know, they realize that you just can't simply wing it. You know, you can't just go in there and just, you know, magically, you know, get a great, you know, grade, you know, on a test. Sometimes it requires actually putting in the time. And even then, you may not get the results that you want. So, so that's some added stress that comes with that. Test anxiety, I can tell you, you know, I always, you know, uh, you know uh, stressed out about tests, but I tell you what, I studied a lot too. I think that's when it became a positive, that stress, because it made me want to study twice as much because I wanted to be prepared for that test. Uh, and, and I did not like the idea of failing. So I look at it as that stress actually helped me and it became a positive for me you know, in school. But it can become overwhelming. It can come to the point where you have studied, but you have freaked yourself out so bad, you can't even remember the stuff once you get in there to take that test. So there has to be kind of a balance there a little bit. <clears throat> Some other stuff here. Some managing you know, your test anxiety. Study as much as you can. Would you agree with that? Or does that work for you? Maybe it doesn't. For me, that's what worked for me. I studied as much as I possibly, possibly could, and as a result, that would help reduce some of my stress because I felt like when I showed up for that test, I was not nervous at that point. I, I felt like, you know what, I knew, I knew all the material that I was going to learn. Whatever was going to happen was going to happen at that point. What do you think? I get to a point where studying just isn't effective. Okay. And then if I continue to study, then my brain just gets okay. tired of the material and I just start forgetting. So when really, it's... up to a certain point, you kind of have to shut it off, you know, sort of speak, you know, when it comes to that. You know, you have to kind of ease back a little bit. So you find your kind of where your point is. You know, okay. Uh, try to mimic test-taking conditions. Have you ever tried that? With the ACT. Okay, with the ACT. Okay. Uh, I'll give you an example. This is something that I would imagine that hardly any student would do, but I had issues apparently. So, uh, so one of the things that I would do is I would create practice tests. I would uh, look at my notes in class, and then uh, or quizzes that I may have had or so forth, and then I would try to create a test that resembled the material that I felt would be on the next test. And so sometimes I'd also look at old tests that I had and try to create a test that looked similar in structure to that. And I would do it and I would give myself that test. Uh, there would be times when uh, I would actually go into a classroom. Uh, some of my uh, tests were blue books, so you had to write essays in class. So, and I would try to guess what would most likely be on the test. I would go into a classroom, empty classroom, and I would time myself writing some of those potential questions that I could encounter. And so by doing that, I you know, simulated you know, those test conditions, so by the time I actually showed up, I generally wasn't nervous. You know, I felt pretty confident you know, in what was going to happen. Now, another thing is you actually have to have the time to do that. <laughs> you know, some people, that's part of their stressors. They don't have enough time you know, to get stuff that, that they want done. Learn to study more you know, you know, you know, effectively. You know, I would agree with that. I'm assuming you would probably agree with that. So what could you do to be studying more effectively? Know what kind of material the teachers actually test on. Yes, because you could be taking, you know, 40 or 50 pages of notes, but you know that maybe they focus more attention on one chapter than anything else. <clears throat> so maybe it's just focusing more on that or actually going to a tutor. So if you're having a hard time with something, uh, why spend all those hours and hours trying to figure it out when you could go to a tutor and they could help you a little bit more and it becomes a little bit more you know, efficient that way. You know, so you're saving time you know, by doing that. Some other stuff, you know, you know, find ways to calm down. Uh, that's easier said than done. I mean, what, what would be a way for you to calm down? What do you do, typically, to calm yourself down? Take naps. Okay, take nap. So, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. So maybe you've been studying for a while, you're stressed out. Maybe go take a 45 minute to an hour nap could make you, uh, you know, more you know, effective later on because you get that rest and you kind of restart after that. So I think that's actually a good one. <clears throat> Watch your, uh, you know, your diet. 
Yeah, well, I can see that, maybe. You know, they say, you know, you know, basically don't drink as much caffeine, you know, that type of thing. Uh, you know, get enough sleep. I think that's a pretty common one. Exercise regularly. Would you agree with that one? You pay $150 a semester. I always mention this because you spend $150 a semester having access to the gym. Do you use it? No. No. So, uh, so I would say maybe going to the gym, not all the time, but here and there, may be a good way you know, kind of de-stress. Maybe you find someone that you know and you go work out together and, and you get the kind of talk. Uh, Especially if it's someone in your class. You guys can be talking you know, about the material while you're exercising. So you're actually kind of getting to do you know, two good things at once. Make sure you have you know, plenty of time. Obviously, that's always good. Make sure you have enough time to study and, and so forth. And then, of course, in the end, there are a lot of resources that you can go to. I mean, obviously, Project A, you know, we have a, our licensed counselor. We do workshops related to tests. Uh, you know, anxiety and so forth, but you can go to the ACTS office here, you know, on campus. So there's a lot of things where you can go and get those resources, you know, for help. So causes of stress, another one is finances. Would you agree that finances can become, you know, a stressful issue related to school? Yes. Example. What would be an example of it? I thought I was going to have to drop a class and then take a part time graduate yeah. and then graduate even later than planned. So that can be pretty stressful because that's taking, you know, that's time. Time you're losing potentially, you know, if you had to do that. <coughs> now some people, you know, uh, the deal with finances, sometimes they work, you know, part-time or full-time job, you know, I mean, there's a lot of different ways that they can do that. Sometimes they get scholarships that can help offset that. I just think being frugal in general can typically help because the more you spend, the more potential problems you're going to have. You know, so it's just trying to you know really know all of your available resources. Talking to the financial aid office, you know, if you're not sure about something, getting that information, you know, before you make that you know final decision. Postgraduate plans that can be stressful because it's the idea you finally get your college degree. Then what? Then what do you do? Then, the, then it's, you have to be an adult at that point. That's, now it's life. You've got to go out there and you've got to find a job and you're going to be doing that for the rest of your life, you know, be working at that point. So it can be stressful because sometimes we get comfort, you know, of being in that, you know, college. You know, we don't necessarily have to think about going out there and finding that full-time job at that point, you know, at that point. So, or maybe you're thinking about going to graduate school. I mean, that, uh, or, I mean that's a new, a different type of stress as well. Which graduate school are you going to go to? Are you going to commute where you're driving there? Or are you going to live there on campus? So there's a lot of choices there. And then, the school, uh, of course, you know, school stress, you know, busting tips, you know, uh, you know, one thing, you know, get plenty of sleep. The most common one right there. I mean, that's what they're always going to tell you. Think positive. So that visualization, thinking of, you know, positive things. Don't constantly be negative and think you're going to fail. Uh, have a stress, you know, kind of outlet, someone that you can kind of talk to, or maybe you can go do a hobby. Mine is golf. I love golf. That's my thing. You know, uh, but you may find something else that you really like doing. You know, engage in uh, relaxation techniques. That's that positive, you know, positive, you know, positive thinking, visualization. And then, of course, talk to someone, most common. Out of all of these right here, what would you say that you typically do out of those? What works for you? Sleep. If that doesn't work, then I go to counseling. Okay. So, so you focus primarily on you know, making sure you get plenty of sleep and then being able to talk to someone. Sometimes it helps just to kind of bounce off those ideas that you're having. Absolutely. Uh, some student stress and anxiety resources. These are just different, you know, uh, you know, like organizations out there that have, you know, helpful tips. I won't go and name all these. I mean, that's just, just a list of, of places where you can get, you know, information like the National Alliance on Mental Health, you know, Health Illness, you know, Student Resources. I mean, there's a lot of different ones here. And then, of course, things that, you know, about avoiding stress, you know, um, you know, like know your limitations. That's always important. 
you know, you can't do everything. You know, and for some, and this I see a lot. I see a lot of students and people in general that just try to they do too much. You know, you cannot do everything. You know, so so don't think that you can. Have a good support team, you know, or support system in place. I think that's always good. Understand your triggers. So what would be some of your triggers? What is most likely going to stress you out? Classes that I don't <coughs> enjoy. Okay, classes that you don't enjoy. So, so I think maybe choosing the right major is important. Because if you don't choose the right major, you really will be miserable for that X amount of years that you're going to be taking those classes. And so now maybe, you know, for some, they choose a major that's probably more in demand, and, and, uh, you know, because they want to get that, you know, that job, but they don't necessarily love it. What can you do in order to find the balance? Minor in something. You know that you really enjoy so that way you're getting a little bit of some of those classes that you love and then you're taking some classes that are more practical that's going to help you get that job so, so you find the balance that way uh, some other stuff you know learn realization techniques which we've already talked about you know manage your time obviously that's the most important thing because time management if you don't uh, you know have that down it's going to be stressful because if you need to study a whole bunch for a test but you only give yourself maybe an hour you know, before the, you know, the study, that's not good. So you actually have to find the balance. Um, you have to be able to say no. I mean, that's part of that time management. You're going to have friends and other people that want to do things, and you're going to want to go do those things. But sometimes you actually have to tell them, no, I can't do it. I have to study. So it's learning to do that. And it may be also with job responsibilities or whatever it may be. You have to be able to say, no, I cannot work that extra shift. I have a test that's coming up. Exercise, obviously that's a given because you're spending $150 a semester. Don't waste that money. You know, you definitely go there. And at the end, be more assertive. You know, you have to be able not let people try to bully you around. You know, like constantly bullying you to go to the gym and work out because you're spending $150. You know, you're just gonna have to be assertive and say, no, I'm going to waste that $150. You know, uh, some other things. You know, like the stress don'ts, things that you should not be doing. Substance, uh, substance abuse. So basically, if you are stressed out, drinking, or whatever it may be, is not the thing to be doing. So uh, addiction, you know, don't be trying to drown out, you know, those problems, you know, with drugs or you know alcohol or anything like that. Uh, you know, abuse of any kind, you know, either hurting yourself or hurting someone, or verbal screaming, cussing people out. It's not the way to do it. And of course, isolation. You know, you don't need to necessarily isolate yourself from everyone. Now, I do, uh, you know, would argue that sometimes you need some alone time. You know, but you don't want to do it at, uh, to the point where you know people don't see you for days. I mean, you, you know, you have. It's all about that balance. And sometimes it's better to go talk to someone, you know, than let it get to that point. So my question: Do you have questions? Right. then that's all I have.